Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. All Things Middle Earth here with starting commander builds for Dwalin and Haldir. If you start a new season or you're brand new to the game and you start in one of the good alignment factions, I'll put on the screen here, you will start with a combination of Dwalin or Haldir. There are two more good side commanders we'll cover in a future video as well as the evil side commanders. So stay tuned and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on those. But let's go ahead and jump into the build guide for Dwalin and Haldir. All right, so starting out with Dwalin, I'm gonna put an image here on the screen in just a second. As you can see here, we have a build guide for Dwalin. By the way, these will be linked down below for both of the commanders. Any commanders we show, we'll have this format have a picture down below. But over here on the left side, you can see which commander it is in their picture, obviously. And then up at the top, we have a few more details about the commander so you can get to know them a little bit better. Again, this is just meant to be a very baseline understanding and try to prevent people from using really bad builds or using commanders they shouldn't use at all or using the commanders completely opposite of how their kits actually work. But starting out for Dwalin, we have a minimum optimal respect of five and a max maximum respect of 25. This meaning five is a really good starting point. And technically you only need three for Dwalin, but I put five because I do think his R5 tree is very important, which we'll talk about in a second. But Dwalin is a commander who can go to respect 25, the max respect level and not have points wasted. Next up for the strengths, we have that it is commander physical damage. Again, that is what Dwalin does. He's the one doing the damage. The troops kind of support him doing the damage. Next up, we have the ideal troops, which are going to be guardians at 80% and Ram Riders at 20%. Now your actual command of troops will change depending on the level of your commander and the level of your military academy. So the percentages are gonna help you no matter what level you're at to kind of have the right ratio so you can kind of get some work done. Next up on the sheet, we have the items that you can use for Dwal and this is going to be the Battle Axe and we have the effect listed below as Flay, the Scale Mail with Melee Vigor, the Full Helm with Melee Vigor and the Hit Lane with Mend. And last but certainly not least, we get to the skill optimization. Here you can see the skills and how many points you're gonna put into them as well as the order you're gonna put the points in. So you're going to start out with Experienced Warrior, then go to Hunt Down and Collaboration, followed by Durin's Blood, Whirlwind, All In, and then your last three points are going to go 2, 1, and do Musician and Level Headed. Now for Dwalin specifically, the reason that I didn't put his minimum optimal respect at 3 is because his R5 build is really good, or the R5 tree is really good in addition to this build we're running here. And a lot of people look to push Dwalin's respect as soon as possible to start getting points and eventually max out the R5 title. I'll put it on the screen here really quickly. The R5 title is going to reduce burn damage by 50% at the max level, as well as 15% overall damage reduction, which is very, very good because it keeps your troops alive, which means Dwalin can do damage more often. Now, before we jump into how there's a guy, I do want to make a note about the R10 item on each commander just to future proof you for whether or not you start investing in this commander. And without getting into crazy details, which we might cover in future videos, I'm just going to give these a pass or fail of whether or not you should or could invest in them and see good return for your investment. And for Dwalin, it's very simply going to be a fail. This item right here, the Twin Axes, it's just not the best option for him. There are even purple options people consider better. So don't fall into the trap of getting Dwalin's R10 item. Next up, it's going to be Halder. And like I said at the beginning, if you're starting as a good faction, you're going to start with one of these commanders, Dwalin or Halder. So if you're playing as a good faction, you have one of these guys and should definitely make sure you're using them properly. For Halder, we have his minimum optimal respect at five. And uh, unlike Dwalin, who can get going without it, Halder really does need the R5. Again, not saying on your first day you can't use him. Do what you can, but the R5 is very crucial for Halder. And the maximum respect here is going to be 17. At 17, he kind of stops gaining a lot of viability, in my opinion. Again, you could go higher, but if you're trying to get the mo most bang for your buck, 17 is that sweet spot for me. For strength for him, we have early round range troop buffing. And ideal troops are Sentinels, Bow Knights, and Herald. So a combination of three elves. We have Sentinels in the biggest stack, 60% of them, Bow Knights at 20%, and Heralds, your melee frontline. We're gonna be tanking for your range units at 20%. Now I do wanna know on any of these commanders, the troops we talk about, this is a good starting point, but as you learn the game, as you experience things in your server, what other players are running, what you might decide to shuffle things around a little bit. These builds are definitely going to get you going, but the reality is every situation is a little bit different. So you might find that you want more bow knights. Maybe you're seeing a lot of trolls or something. So the giant slayer ability is gonna get a lot more use. If everyone's using trolls, you're fighting Mordor in your first season, this could be an option, but maybe you're in a later season or you're just not fighting trolls, you're fighting a good faction, and so you end up not using as many bonites at all. You could actually look to run the tier two marksman, which is the tier two version of the sentinels, and run both of them with the heralds in front to tank for them. There's lots of viability, and how deer is a little bit more flexible. Dwalin, we talked about with the dwarves, it's pretty, you know, that's pretty trident too. That's the standard affordable Dwalin build. 
with how though you can get a little bit flexible on the ratios for your ranged troops and other types of troops depending on what you have available with your tier four unit with hireable units on the map all that kind of stuff all right continuing on we have for the weapon here an elf strength mirkwood bow a melee vigor scale mail a hysteria trapper's hood and an elf strength harp of lothlorien now i also want to make a note on some of these pieces if you're overlapping your commanders let's say you happen to have both these commanders and you want to use both of them and they both use a scale mail for example how there's one who can be a little bit more flexible and you can be a little bit more flexible depending on what you have something like a burn chest could be used on dwallen in place of the scale mail so how they could have scale mail or something like a hunter skin could be used on how they with something like ranged vigor there's a lot of flexibility how they can't use the spree hauberk with burn protection which is a very common piece for troops that can use it so that's one of those pieces if you do see kind of bonus tip if you see a burn chest don't get rid of it because those things are very, very valuable. But again, you can get a little bit flexible based on what you have if they use the same items. Next up for the skill order priority, we're going to be down here in the R5 with Galadrim. And then our second batch of points is going to go over here into guide. Now, I didn't mention it, but hopefully it makes sense. If you don't have your Halder at respect five, maybe you only have them at the respect zero, you would just skip the parts you don't have access to. So if you do have it and you just have access to these first two trees, you're just going to start and put your 15 points here your one point here, your seven points here, and then you'll just fill out the rest of the build because you're gonna have extra points. But as you're respecting him up, you can just start wherever you have unlocked. You don't have to wait to use him until you actually have the R5 unlocked. But again, like I said, R5 then down to guide here with those points, followed by one point in March Warden of Lothlorien. Yes, only one point, just to get your allegiance to the evade that you get with the one point there. Then we're gonna go over here to shield training, followed by 14 points in Sylvan Elf and seven points in forest agility we don't want to go all the way in it's just not worth the last point in sylvan elf and we just want to get the forest agility done your last two points are going to go into armed escort right here which is going to get you a little bit of a heal and again both of these builds are going to be at respect five and level 50 so if your respect's a little bit lower you might have a couple left just take off of the last thing in the priority list and if you have more respect obviously you can finish up skills that you started or a skill like sylvan elf you could put one more point and max it out it's not going to hurt you but if you're trying to really be efficient and you only have them at this like ideal respect five, this would be the build. Now, as far as how there goes for his R10 weapon, he is also going to get a fail. Again, we're not going to get crazy into it and there might be some that disagree. So let me know down below if you've used these weapons and like them. But as a very quick overview for it, if you're a brand new player, the option to go for this to me is not worth it. One last note we're going to talk about before we wrap up here is this button. It's just below me. So I'm going to zoom in here. As you can see below the gear, there is this button right here this is going to take you to the impart wisdom screen and you can give your commanders gear that you're not using to level up their imparted wisdom each level is going to give you a skill point so i did want to make it clear that these builds do include this because it's fairly easy especially for tier one commanders to get this leveled up now on your first day your first week are you going to have imparted wisdom done on everybody no and that's okay so don't worry about it if you're a few points short just follow the order as best you can but as soon as you start having a lot of green gear you're not using or even blue gear you're not using, you can feed it into this here for your main, main commanders. Again, don't do this on commanders you're not using, but for your main commanders you are using like Dwallin, for example, I would do his imparted wisdom because the build we're talking about does include the extra four skill points. And that's going to do it for our build guides for Haldir and Dwallin. Again, let me know if you're using them in a new season, how you're liking them. And again, make sure you're subscribed because we're going to cover the other commanders, which we have Eowyn and Faramir, as well as our evil commanders will be in a future video as well. So subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss out on future starting guide videos. But that'll do it for me in this one, and I'll see you all in a future video.